Hi everybody, Erica Buenaflor, resident curandera, shaman. In this video, I'm going to be providing you with an introduction of my training and experience as a curandera. So my training, it comes from a blend of field and also academic research. An academic, I got a master's in religious studies with a focus on ancient Mesoamerican shamanism as well as contemporary curanderismo. In my undergrad, I was involved in a college honors program at UCLA, which allowed me to take 10 graduate courses, and I kind of worked in my way to study economic globalization alongside curanderismo. <laughs> um, and I had some really cool uh, Chicano study professors there and, and Chicana studies professors, so they let me get away with it. It was really cool. And uh, also culturally, my background, uh, I come from a long line of grandmother curanderas. My great-great-grandmother was a very well-known curandera in Chihuahua, Mexico. During the Mexican Revolution, she was a curandera and a businesswoman. She owned a saloon and she was a curandera. So uh, yeah, she was, she was very well-known. People went all over the place to come see her for healing, for cleansing. And um, my great-grandmother, who had the honor and pleasure to know for, for a long time of my life, up until I was about eight, uh, to know, and I was around her, and I was exposed to that culture. Uh, when I came to Los Angeles, I'm first generation, I kind of was uh, disassociated from that culture because most of my family was from Mexico. And fast forwarding, I, um, I was very fortunate when I got to UCLA, at that time, oh my God, it was my heart, my, my spirit was awakened. Uh, it was also around that time, um, you know, shortly thereafter, in 1993, the hunger strike had happened at UCLA uh, for the, you know, we were trying to get the uh, Chicano, uh, Chicano Studies Department. Uh, we, we did get the Cesar Chavez Center. Um, I actually wasn't involved in it personally, but um, I had a lot of friends that were, and I came in a few years after all that had happened. So it was still very much um, the, the sentiment at that time very much involved in social justice and my spirit, my soul was awakened at that time. Because of all this, uh, you know, my spirit, my soul was awakened. I, I became awakened with uh, social justice issues and I decided to go to law school to be of service, to be working at nonprofits and, and help people in that way. And that, you know, it was very idealistic. In my second year of law school, I decided to take a break with my girlfriend uh, during summer to go to the, to the Yucatan. And we had this wonderful experience, synchronicities, all these synchronicities happen where we missed our flight and we sat by this gentleman who was telling us, you know, these amazing stories about his, his property in Tulum. And, you know, it was, it was interesting. But then he told us about some curanderas and curanderas that he knew. And, he got my attention. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> curanderas, curanderos. And uh, then he's like, he knew he got my attention. So it's like, yeah, you know, you should come visit me. So you should come visit. You're not going to like Ancon. And uh, so we're like, oh, we'll see, we'll see. And we actually did go out to, to visit him. And that's when I met my first set of mentors, uh, Don Tomas and uh, Barbara. And uh, Don Tomas was uh, from, he's Yucatec Mayan, he spoke Yucatec Mayan, uh, was very versed in the traditions, he lived his, all his life in the Yucatan. Uh, where Barbara, she came from the AFA, Mexico City, and she was versed as well in uh, the Yucatec Mayan traditions, but she was also very versed in the Nahu Nahuatl traditions, uh, which are generally associated with the Aztec or the Mexica. Uh, so I, I was kept going there for about the next seven years. I was going to the Yucatan for about every four to six months to study with them and also some other curanderas, but principally them. Uh, so it was, it was just an amazing experience. And also when I was in the States, I was taking a lot of new age classes that, well, the ones that interested me and I was getting certified in different things. I was an avid yogi. So I was, I was pretty much living two lives at the time where I was a, an attorney and I was a curandera mentee. So fast forwarding, uh, in 2005, I was hiking. 
And I did this very intense uh, journeying where I went in into the, into the Earth's core and I had a time slip. What felt like maybe 15 minutes, hours went by. And I jumped up like the bunny in Alice in Wonderland and like, oh my God, I'm gonna miss my flight, I'm gonna miss my flight, and I did. I fell off a cliff. Three days later, they told me all the things that, well, the major things that were wrong. I had a skull fracture, a brain hemorrhage, left AC dislocated, two vertebrae in my back fractured, my coccyx completely shattered, my left leg fractured in three places, my right leg, knee down, all of my bones shattered and came out of my heel. And those were the big things. And, um, oh yeah, and six weeks later they also told me that I got severe osteomyelitis because when they put my bones back, they didn't do a culture and they put it back in with the infection. So uh, the, the bacteria was eating away at my bones and I lost half the bones, a good portion of my bones in my right ankle. So they told me, yeah, you know, it's more than likely that you're not gonna be able to walk and if you walk, it's gonna be with some kind of assistance and you know, you're coccyx shattered, nothing we can do about that, you're gonna be in pain the rest of your life. And you know, they, they kept telling me all these dire diagnoses and at that time when I had first heard of all the things that were wrong, I decided, okay, I'm going to, I'm either going to decide and, and allow some other people to decide for me what is gonna be happening to my body or I'm gonna decide what is going to happen to my body. And I chose the latter. I chose to d step into my power and accept my don. Um, the don, it's a Spanish word for, it's a gift of healing from God. It's a very common word that's used in curanderismo traditions, which is what I embrace. I finally fully embrace my don for the first time in my life and I just, you know, every time they kept telling me, oh, you're not going to be able to walk, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, I would just turn and say, um, yeah, so when can I start doing my yoga again? <laughs> um, they would just look at me like, okay, you know, they would just kind of look like, okay, let's, let's, uh, we'll see what happens. So uh, I was in a wheelchair for almost a year. And during that time, I put into practice everything that I had been studying as a curandera mentee. And long story short, after not walking for almost a year, I walked with a completely normal gait in less than two weeks and remain to this day 100% pain free. I was finally, you know, I was, I was walking, I was dancing. At that time, I realized that I was not really happy um, where I was at, what I was doing. So I decided uh, to, after two months after my last surgery, I went to, back to the Yucatan, and I went to actually this time to Laguna Bacalar. I met my second set of mentors. I met Malina, and I, she later introduced me to Don Fernando. And I remember very clearly one of my most poignant moments with Malina. Um, I had decided, you know, everybody was going out, uh, out to a site, and I decided to stay back and hang out with her. I was very intrigued and drawn by her. And it was very interesting. We were all at a table and she was, looked right over at me. We were all talking and she just drew me in. And it felt like it was just me and her in this other place, this other realm. And she looked at me and she just looked right into my soul and she asked me, so Erica, are you living your bliss, joy, and happiness? And I just, <laughs> I just got dumbfounded and I just was like, well, yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a happy person. I'm a really happy person. And then she just seemed to draw me, draw me in just even closer. And she said, no, are you living your bliss, joy, and happiness? And I couldn't answer her. I couldn't answer her. And 
I went back to LA and that question just kept repeating, 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 and repeating. And I realized that I was not living my bliss, joy, and happiness. So um, I decided to get my first group of people together. You know, at that time, I was already teaching. Um, I was practicing to, um, I didn't identify yet as myself as a curandera. I was I identified myself as a healer, as an alchemist, many other things. Um, that was a process for me coming out of the closet, so to speak, and embracing myself, embracing everything that I am. I decided to get a group of, of people together and teach a class down in the Yucatan. And um, I just actually quit my job. <laughs> I got my first group of people together and I told Malina, I called her up, I'm like, all right, I'm heading down. I'm bringing my first group of people together. And she's like, wow, oh my God, you are primal. It's like, yep. So, um, so she, that later on, she introduced me to Don Fernando. Again, Don Fernando, very similar, very similar um, as my first set of mentors. Don Fernando, he uh, was also Yucatec Mayan, spoke Yucatec Mayan and was very versed in their traditions. He was actually a caretaker at Cajun Leach, um, and he taught me a lot about uh, curanderismo and limpias, and uh, Malina was very eclectic uh, in practice. She came from New Mexico. She knew a lot about Native American traditions. Uh, she actually knew Qigong. Of course, she knew a lot about the Yucatec mind. She was an Azteca dancer. Uh, she was, an, she is an amazing healer, and I was just very blessed for that opportunity. And during that time in my second mentorship, I became really hungry. I really wanted to understand the ancient traditions of of my peoples, of the indigenous peoples. So I decided uh, to go back to school and bury my head in the books and learn about these traditions and study these traditions in the, in the ethno-historical records. So that's what I did. I went to UC Riverside and I met uh, Professor Carl Taub, uh, Wendy Ashmore, and a few others. And that's what I did. I went there and I had an amazing time just reading and loving and studying about these traditions. But I also realized that Academia wasn't for me. I didn't want to study about curanderas and curanderas. I am the curandera. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm good with my masters. And uh, so that's how I know a lot about these traditions and uh, the ancient traditions. And that's what a lot of my books are going to be covering. That's my first book, Cleansing Rites of Curanderismo, and my uh, second book, uh, Curanderismo Soul Retrieval, which is coming out May of 2019. Um, and just a lot of them, they're, they're grounded and they're rooted in the ancient traditions and also how we can incorporate them into our lives and help us in this day-to-day -day life to live and realize our bliss. So I am so excited and so honored and blessed to feel blessed to teach you and to show you about these ancient traditions so they can hope to hopefully help you and bring some more magic and love and light in your life. So please stay tuned and thank you so much for tuning in.